Uh, trichloroethylene, as I mentioned, I think may be another important cause of Parkinson's disease. In fact, you know, I'm a little bit on the crazy side. I think trichloroethylene might be the most important cause of Parkinson's disease uh, in, the, in the United States. Um, and it's been used for a wide range of uh, products. In 1970, uh, two pounds per American of uh, trichloroethylene was produced. It's estimated that 10 million people worked with the chemical, including aircraft and jet engine mechanics, automobile workers, computer specialists, dry cleaners, embalmers, painters and printers, sewage workers, shoemakers, taxidermists, weapon specialists, and varnish workers. It's had a wide range of uh, commercial and consumer uses, everything from decaffeinating coffee in the 1970s to degreasing metal, the paint remover uh, used in the production of refrigerants, even found in typewriter correction fluid and a host of industrial uses, including automotive care. If you worked as a mechanic and sprayed uh, a, chem uh, a chemical on an engine and the grease melted away, that might have been trichloroethylene. Been used in the computer and electronics industry, including in Silicon Valley. If you've worked with electrical equipment in the 1950s, 60s, or 70s, you were likely working with uh, trichloroethylene. It was so uh, ubiquitous that it was even used to anesthetize patients, especially uh, pregnant women. This is a, a quote from the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology by Dr. Charles Flowers in 1956, in which he says that trichloroethylene is a potent analgesic drug. Its margin of safety and ease of administration will also ultimately make it a standard agent on all delivery floors. Trilene's wide variety of uses will probably allow almost every obstetrician to find a place for it in his obstetrical practice. So if this is being used to uh, anesthetize uh, pregnant women, you can imagine how widely it was used. Unfortunately, uh, research shown uh, over a decade ago by Dr. Caroline Tanner uh, and her colleague, Dr. Sam Goldman, showed that TCE, that Javier occupational exposure to TCE, trichloroethylene, is associated with a 500% increased risk of Parkinson's disease. And like smoking and lung cancer, you don't smoke a cigarette and develop lung cancer the next day. It takes years of exposure and years after that for the disease to manifest. They found that the time lag between exposure and diagnosis of Parkinson's disease ranged from 10 to 40 years. And because of its widespread use, they said that the potential public health implications are substantial. Parkinson's disease turns out to be only one of the uh, adverse health consequences of TCE. Its big risk is that it causes cancer. Uh, this isn't my opinion. This is the opinion of the World Health Organization, which says that TCE is carcinogenic to humans. The Department of Health and Human Services says it's known to be a human carcinogen. And the EPA says it's carcinogenic in humans by all routes of exposure, because you can uh, work with it and come in contact with your skin. You can uh, breathe it in because it's readily volatile, hence its use in dry cleaning. Uh, and it can contaminate groundwater, where it's contaminated up to 30% of groundwater in the United States. According to a report from the CDC, exposure to, TDC, to TCE was associated with excess incidences of liver cancer, kidney cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, prostate cancer, and multiple myeloma. Recently, uh, in January of this year, the Wall Street Journal ran a front page article highlighting that cancer rates among Americans under the age of 50 are increasing at the same time that uh, smoking rates are decreasing. So what's causing cancer rates among young adults to be rising at the same time that smoking rates is decreasing? It can't be aging, it can't be screening because generally we don't screen for most cancers until age 50. Can't be genetics because it's uh, too short of a time period. And so it leaves us with the concerning conclusion that it might be our environment and it might be toxins that we're releasing into our food, water, and air, including chemicals like trichloroethylene. Trichloroethylene really, uh, well, is in the public eye right now because it contaminated the marine base uh, Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987, where a million Marines, their families, their dependents, and civilians were exposed to unsafe levels of TCE in the water that was they were drinking at the base. And then Dr. Caroline Tanner and Sam Goldman, uh, same individuals who did that earlier twin study, recently investigated uh, the number of people who developed Parkinson's at the Marine Base Camp Lejeune. 
compared to a marine base on the west coast called Camp Pendleton that was much less contaminated with trichloroethylene. And when they looked at 340,000 service members, they found that the risk of Parkinson's disease was 70% higher in Camp Lejeune veterans. Now, mind you, these are Marines who are almost by definition healthy. They were all young, average age was 20, and they were only at the Marine base for just over two years. Yet 35 years later, healthy Marines uh, were developing Parkinson's disease at a rate at a level 70% higher than those at a much less contaminated base. And the tragedy of all this is that the Marines knew about this contamination, at least for the latter part portions of the year, and took no action to, pr uh, to protect uh, the best and brightest among us. In addition to working with it uh, or being exposed to a military base, thousands if not millions of us are exposed to this through uh, outdoor air, contaminated water, and something called vapor intrusion. Uh, many of you know that radon can evaporate from the soil into people's homes, especially basements, and cause lung cancer. Well, TCE can be contaminate uh, groundwater, which is, depending on where you live, 15 to 50 feet before the surface. And TCE can then form underground rivers or plumes and then evaporate into people's homes, schools, and workplaces undetected. In Rochester, we evaluated a cohort of attorneys who worked in an office building that was next door to a contaminated dry cleaning site. Of the 79 attorneys that we evaluated, four had Parkinson's disease and 15 had a cancer related to TCE. We also evaluated 75 uh, attorneys who weren't partners in that law firm, and we only found one individual with Parkinson's disease and four individuals with cancer. These sites are around us everywhere. Uh, I went to high school in Newport Beach, uh, California, so I thought to myself, where is the last place in the world that you would find uh, an industrial chemical like trichloroethylene? Uh, so I said, it must be Newport Beach. So I Googled trichloroethylene in Newport Beach, only to find that a former aerospace facility less than a half mile from where I went to high school at Corona Mar High School uh, was contaminated with trichloroethylene and perchloroethylene. This used to be a major aerospace uh, facility uh, for 30 plus years, um, located about three miles from the Pacific Ocean and some of the most expensive real estate uh, in Southern California. After the closure of this aerospace unit in 1993, the facility was uh, demolished and it was rezoned for industrial, uh, for I'm sorry, from industrial use to residential use. Um, as a part of a series of uh, studies, they eventually found that trichloroethylene and other chemicals were found in high levels uh, in the soil gas uh, in, these, uh, in this area. And in 2022, they found that TCE and PCE were detected above screening, screening levels in the indoor air of 123 homes in Newport Beach, California. And they thought this process of vapor intrusion whereby TCE or PCE PCE evaporates from contaminated groundwater or soil and entered people's homes, occurred in 27 homes and was found in high levels in people's master bedrooms, in their living rooms, and in their children's playrooms. These homes were offered air purifying units. And uh, until may, perhaps very recently, uh, uh, well, to my knowledge, no systematic health assessments have occurred of the current or former residents. Uh, in Newport Beach, California. And this plume is present, it's moving, and it's being monitored. And so uh, this is a Jamboree Road, which leads down to Pacific Coast Highway about three miles south. Um, and this is uh, up here in the upper left-hand corner is uh, where I went to high school, Cronomar High School, and this is a church. And you can see these purple boxes are monitoring wells. And I'll show you a picture. This is what a monitoring well looks like. Um, this is one right near uh, my high school, which happens to be right back here in the background. Um, and that's that SG-73 is a picture of that monitoring well that I showed. Fortunately, that one hasn't shown to be elevated levels, uh, at least as far as I could see through 2019. But other monitoring wells in Newport Beach, California, on right next to a very expensive golf course, uh, and right near homes have found TCE, trichloroethylene, and perchloroethylene to be uh, elevated at levels that are much, much orders of magnitude higher than that 
which have been deemed to be safe. 